Hello. In this video, we're going to quickly look at um, Excel Module 5 SAM Project 1, how to do it step by step. Um, so this has instruction file and then it has a support file in addition to the uh, start file. I'm going to continue downloading all three. Let's open instructions. So we have instructions going to say no here. And then we're going to go select the start file. The start file is an Excel file with the name on it. And then I'm um, going to enable editing. Work on that. All right. So let's uh, start by changing the name of the file. Go to File, Save As, Browse, and just make sure you change the one at the end to two. Save it. And then um, if you click, take a look at this uh, worksheet, we have multiple worksheets here. We have Santa Monica, Venice, uh, Marina, and then all locations here, um, and then helmets for location. So let's um, go and read the step one. The step one here is um, Emilia is the owner of 11th gear and spoke bike rental. Each of her location managers sent her the 2019 rental and revenue data. To make the data easier to understand, Emilia wants to consolidate the sta and standardize the format of each location data. Apply office theme uh, to the workbook. So we're going to start by applying office theme to the workbook. Um, so office theme is in page uh, layout. And you have the themes here. I'm going to go and click and select office. So that you can see that. And I do that. It does change um, a number of styles, formatting, and colors. Yeah. And then the next step is group Santa Monica Venice Marina worksheet with all three worksheets selected. Now when it comes to grouping worksheet, now you group a worksheet when you want to work on all three sheets at the same time. So if you um, go and make a change in one of the cell when the worksheet is grouped, then it's going to affect all the other worksheets. So it's very important to be uh, very careful when you're working with groups worksheet because you are not actually, uh, you will not be able to see all three sheets at the same time. You're looking at only one worksheet. So when you're making changes, you may, might go and override some of the data in, on the other sheets. Um, so let's group the worksheet. To group the worksheet, so we want to group uh, Santa Monica, Venice, and uh, Marina. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Santa Monica uh, press and hold your shift key in your keyboard, okay, and then select Marina. Okay, so it says um, simply what we're doing here is when you're doing this, you have to click on Santa Monica, uh, make sure you hold the shift key, and then uh, and select the the last worksheet. So you can see that there's a solid underline below all three tabs. That means all three worksheet is grouped together. Now, what you can do at this point, uh, if you go and make changes to any one of these, let's say you go and make changes to uh, cell number B7, now that is going to make changes to cell B7 in all the sheets in the group. Okay, so, um, so we have grouped the worksheet and then um, uh, we're gonna uh, make the following uh, formatting changes to merge range A1 to N1. So A1 to N1 is here. When you select this first cell, it selects A1 to N1. Then we're going to go and change the font to Arial. Now, go home, change the font to, you can just type that in, Arial. And, 
yeah and then press enter okay and then uh, we're going to change the font size to 18 and uh, change the font color to white background one so when you did the change to this um, worksheet here now since all of these are grouped together you would see that all the worksheet would have the same font size font type and the font color all right so next what we're going to do here is uh, we're not going to ungroup it so it's still grouped you can see that all, you see the solid line below all three tabs now what we're going to do is go to the next step with santa monica uh, uh venice and marina's worksheets still select group together we are going to make the following updates apply adding three cell style to range a2 to n2 so a2 to n2 is right over here it's again a merged um, cell we're going to select a2 to n2 and then we're going to go to cell styles and then we're going to apply heading three style okay so make sure you select the range a2 to n2 and go and select heading three style and then the next step is apply accounting number format with zero decimal places and uh, dollar sign as a symbol to range b16 to n16 so b16 is right over here to n16 uh, b16 to n16 we are going to apply accounting number format so that is over here click on that and then we're going to reduce the decimal places to two zero decimal places okay click this button two times right and then next um, what we are going to do is we're going to move on to the next step um, apply comma number format with zero decimal places to b17 which is this one all the way to n21 n21 is over here we are going to apply comma number format so that is over here so click on comma number format and we're going to reduce the decimal places click on this decrease decimal two times and then that's going to reduce the decimal places with the comma separator uh, don't ungroup the worksheet so as you're doing this you're doing changes to all these work uh, uh, worksheets now next step is Emilia notices two typos in the worksheet for each location with Santa Monica and then other two worksheets still grouped together we are going to make updates now we can see that um, street is um, misspelled so we're going to change that to um, street gonna add an E there okay and tricycle we're going to change that to TRI instead of Y sickle and so those two changes we have made now if you go and check the other worksheets all those changes has been affected in every worksheet that is part of the group right so once you're done with that you can ungroup the worksheet to ungroup the worksheet you can click on any of the worksheet that is not part of the group or you can right click on the tabs and then select ungroup sheets so now it is ungrouped moving on to the next step now that a consistent format is applied to each location worksheet Emilia wants to create a template worksheet she'll use a copy of this template for any new location that she opens rather than formatting a new worksheet select Marina Del Rey um, worksheet and then create a copy of it between um, Marina Del Rey and then all locations so we're going to select this one Marina and then we're going to create a copy we're going to right click on this and then we are going to select move or copy and we are going to create a copy and then we are going to put it before the worksheet all location so that it will be between Marina and all location 
we're going to collect select all location and then click OK. So that's going to create a copy of that worksheet and put it in between Marina and all location. Um, rename the new worksheet using new location. So we're going to right click on that tab, select rename, and then we're going to say new location. Press enter and then click next. Okay, clear the contents, but not the formatting, right? So we're gonna, uh, in the new look, new worksheets, we're going to clear the content, but the, not the formatting of A2 to N2. So A2 to N2 uh, is this one over here, so merge cell here. We're going to press, just press delete. So this, when you press delete, it's just gonna remove the content. Okay, so if you want more control over what you're deleting, you can actually go to clear option here and then select only the content. Okay, so you clear only the content, not the formatting behind. And then clear contents, but not the formatting from B7 to M12. So B7 is over here, B7 to M12. We're just going to clear the contents, not the formatting. So again, clear, clear formats, uh, clear contents. So uh, the formula is still there. So as you populate this, it's going to show the total. We're not deleting the formula. And then um, and then we are also going to do that for B16 to M21. So B16 to M21 is this one. So we're going to go and clear the contents. So that's going to look like this. And then um, we are going to go to step six, go to all locations, which is this one. In in uh, cell B3, in cell B3, B3 is over here. We are going to put the today function to display the current date. So here we're gonna say equals today, open and close bracket. So that will always give today's date, equal today, open parenthesis and close parenthesis and press enter. So that gives today's date. Um, all right, moving on to step number seven. Emilia wants to display the total number of monthly bike rental um, from all of 11th gear bike rental location in one table. Okay, now what we want to do here is we want to um, sum. So for January, we want to see how many cruisers has been uh, rented for each one of these locations. So we want to sum um, B7 in um, this location, add B7 in this location, and then B7 in this location together. So we want to take B7 in each one of these worksheet and then we want to add them together. Now this is called 3D. Um, we're going to use what is called 3D referencing. Okay, three-dimensional referencing. So to do this, we we'll start with the equal sign. Okay, and then uh, we're going to say sum, open bracket, open parenthesis, and then we're going to select Santa Monica. We're going to click on B7. Okay, see how it how it form form uh, how it uh, forms the uh, function here. So you say equal to sum, and then open parenthesis, and then went and selected B7 in Santa Monica. And then we're going to hold shift and select Marina location. Okay, so this we are somewhat grouping the whole worksheet here. So here you can see in the formula bar, it says Santa Monica 2. This is a range from the range Santa Monica to Marina Del Rey. So it's going to take all the worksheet between Santa Monica inclusive. Um, and Marina inclusive uh, and then it's going to take B7 from each one of those worksheet and then sum all of them together. Now all you got to do is put uh, the closing parenthesis here 
and just press enter. So that gives 847. So it's an addition of 133 plus 446 plus 268. So some of that is going to be 847. Now we are going to fill, we can actually fill the rest. Okay, copy, copy the formula you created to B7 to the range B7 to M12. So you're going to copy the formula. Now when you're copying the formula, make sure you do not um, copy any formatting. Okay. Um, so to do this, you can do this in multiple ways. So you can select this and then you can highlight fill to the rest of the columns here until December. Now you have an option here when you fill it. Um, you have an option to Yeah, so here of course it says formatting data bar. So we don't want a data bar here. Um, yeah, the other way to do that is to use paste special. Um, let's try filling it down and see if that if you are able to get that option. So fill it down, and then it still does not give me an option to. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna undo this, and then redo this step again. Um, so I'm going to copy and then um, paste it to the entire cell. Select from B7 to B12, right click and then paste special and I'm just going to select paste formula. Okay, so I'm just pasting the formula from one cell to all the cells in my selection. So I'm using paste special and then select in the paste option you're going to select only the formula so it's not going to uh, copy the formatting it's just to, it's going to paste only the formulas so let's see that it works fine there so what I did there is one more time so I have already have this formula here I'm going to copy and then select B7 to M12 and then I'm going to right click select uh, paste option formulas all right so we have done that step um, which is step number seven moving in on the next step uh, Emilia created a 3d pie chart showing how rental for each Bicycle type contributed to a total revenue in 2019. Now she wants to format it to make it uh, to make important information stand out better. Resize and reposition the 3D pie chart with the title um, 2019 total revenue, which is this one here, so that the upper left corner is located within the cell C24. So I'm going to click on this chart here. I'm going to hold it by the border. And then so that I can move the entire chart and then I'm going to put the put the top left uh, corner of that chart on C24. So you can place it anywhere inside the cell. It doesn't have to be perfect. Anywhere inside the cell C24. Upper left corner is on C24. And then lower right corner is in L44. So I'm going to get hold of this handle here and then drag that so that I'm going to resize that so that the it's in C44 okay I'm um, sorry L44 so it has to be inside L44 it doesn't have to be perfect L44 and there you go so I have resized the 3d pie chart and explode the slice of 3d pie chart representing the revenue from tandem bike rentals so tandem bike is right over here so it seems to be uh, giving the um, highest revenue okay contributing 
the most to the um, to the revenue here. So it's uh, we're going to explode it by 25%. So you can see that you can select the pie inside, right, in a pie chart. So what we're going to do is just make sure you, you have unselected the chart. Click somewhere in the pie chart once. So when you select it once, you can see that it has handles in all the pies. And if you, as that, as you have selected, if you go and select, click on it one more time on a particular pie, you are just selecting that pie. You can see that there is handles only three handles here before we had more. So there is only three handles here. So you have selected this pie only. At this point, you can make changes to this. Um, okay, so I have made a um, blunder here and then I've selected uh, 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 something else. So I'm going to click outside and then click on the pie again and click on it one more time to select that pie. And then I'm gonna right click. And then I'm going to format um, Okay, so let's try format data point. Okay, so when I select format data point here, so I select a format data point and then you have an option to point explosion. Okay, so I'm going to make it explode by 25%. Okay, so point explosion is 25%. Uh, 25%. So you have that. So we have it exploded by 25%. All right, so that is done. Moving on to the next step, modify the data labels in the 3D pie chart as described below. Update the data labels to contain only the category name and percentage value. So data label is the ones you see here. Okay, so that is the data label. Now I have selected the data labels. And if you don't see this, just go ahead and right click and then select format data labels. Then you, you should get this option. So when you right click and select format data labels, you have an option for you to select the data labels you want. So here you want to select only the category name and the percentage. So category name is already selected. I'm going to uncheck value. Okay, so it shows only the category name and then I'm going to check percentage. So it shows the percentage there. Okay. And then change the data labels position to outside end. So label position is given here. We're going to put the labels outside end so that it's placed outside the pie. Okay, so select outside end. Update the data labels number format to display. Uh, display what? Display percent uh, using percentage number format with one percent one uh, decimal place. So we're going to use. Um, uh, number format to be percentage and with one decimal place. We're going to change this to one decimal place and press enter. Okay, so that looks like that. So it's uh, one decimal place and then percentage format. So that is step number 10. Moving on to step number 11. Add headers to all location worksheet. Add a header to all location worksheet using uh, text for internal distribution. Okay, so let's go to all location worksheets. And this is done. We move into all location worksheet, uh, which is this one. So make sure you check, click on this all location worksheet, and then you're going to go to the header section. To do that, you click on in the status bar. You go and click uh, page layout. Okay, so in the page layout. If you scroll all the way up, you should be able to see the header section right here. Okay, so in the center header section, um, uh, we're going to add internal distribution only, internal distribution only. Okay, internal distribution only. And then, um, and then moving on to the next step, step number 12, 
using header and footer elements, add a footer that displays current date. Um, all right. So using header and footer element, display the current date in the left footer section. So let's go down to the footer. So we have the header here. Um, so in the header, we added something. Should be there. I can type that again for internal distribution. Okay, so it's okay. Let's we go to the preview. Let's see if it is that print preview. Hmm. All right, let's try it one more time. So I'm going to go back and try it one more time. So go to the header section and type for internal distribution. Okay, so let's, okay, there it is. So you see it now? And then I'm going to go down to the footer section and uh, in the left footer section, I'm going to add the current date. So over here, I'm going to add the current date, right? So the current date, uh, if you go to header and footer option, so when you select this footer or header, you have this special tab, header and footer. Uh, this gives you option to add um, a code for each one of these different elements. So here I'm going to add the current date. So I'm going to click on current date. Once I select this, I'm going to click on current date. So this is called the current date code. Um, so if I click the next uh, section, you can see that it adds today's date. And then um, sheet name in the center footer section. In the center footer section, I'm going to go and add the sheet name. So I'm going to click sheet name after selecting center footer section. If I move on to the next section, you can see that it says all location, that's the name of the sheet. Okay. So once you've done that, so you have added footer, header and footer. Now if you go to your print preview, that should display correctly. You can see that for internal distribution, uh, the date, current date, and the name of the worksheet. Okay. Now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to the next step change the margin of all location worksheets so that the left margin are set to 0.2. So let's go and set the margin. So the margin is found on the page layout, margin, and then we're going to go to um, um, custom margin. Okay, so click custom margin and then for the left left and right right margin is set to 0.2. So here we're going to set this to 0.2. And right is set to 0.2. Left is set to 0.2, right is set to 0.2. We're not going to change the top and bottom margin. And then click OK. OK, so the margin has been made smaller now. Uh, moving on to step 14, Emilia is very concerned about the safety and has conducted a study to determine how many bike helmets were replaced at each location last year. She wants to include the survey results in the, spread, in the spreadsheet. Okay. Um, so we are going to open the support worksheet that we downloaded at the beginning, right? Um, and then we're going to open that. Um, so I have downloaded it already um, I'm going to click open that that support worksheet okay so this is my worksheet that I downloaded previously I'm going to enable editing before working on this so once I enable editing I can continue with this um, um, so link the data 
to the helmets per location worksheet. Link the data to helmets per location worksheet. So the helmets per location worksheet is right over here. So we are going to just link the data. So we're going to, what that means is that we are going to make a link between this worksheet and that worksheet. So when you're making a link, what happens is that if you, if that uh, worksheet is changed, that, that change will be affected. Uh, you will see the change in this worksheet. So that means they're linked all the time, right? So to do this, um, in cell C3 of helmets per location, we're going to start with the equal sign. So damaged helmet percentage equal, we just put equal here. Um, okay, you start with the equal sign and then you're going to open the other worksheet. So you're gonna open the other worksheet and uh, see, you started with the equal sign on the other uh, in, in the previous worksheet, and then you go to this worksheet in uh, 2019 damage helmet worksheet. You're going to go and click on D2. See what is happening on the formula bar. Now, this is how this is called a you can call this a 4D reference uh, because it's it it we actually giving many things here. So one is the first part within uh, the brackets here is um, the name of the worksheet, which is this worksheet. And then um, and then the next part, which is the name of uh, name of the workbook. The first part is the name of the workbook, uh, which is an XLS file, the entire Excel, Excel file. And then this is the name of the work, this worksheet, 2019 image helmet survey, and then the cell reference and the cell D2, okay? So that's cell reference. At this point, you can go and click enter. Now you can see that it is taking the value from the other worksheet and then putting it over here. So at this worksheet is linked to this worksheet now with a uh, uh, 3D reference. Now you can fill the rest. So before we fill the rest, um, so what we're going to do is now here it, it by default uses an absolute reference. You can remove this absolute reference. So remove the dollar sign so that it is referring to D2, press enter. Now when you fill it, it would, would go and fetch the data from other two worksheet, um, other two cells. Okay. So in the helmets per location worksheet, copy the formula in cell three to arrange C4, C5. So we've done that. Um, and then close the support uh, helmet survey dot XLS X. So we are going to open this and we are going to simply close this worksheet. So close this worksheet and then you go, go to the next step. Emily now wishes to calculate how many helmets sh should be available at each location, uh, accounting for the percentage of the damaged helmet returned at each uh, location. Okay. Uh, Emily will need to use round function in the calculation since a customer won't accept a fraction of a helmet. So, so to do this, what we're going to do is... Uh, Daily rental is 412 and then total helmets required is including the damaged ones. So you need to have, that is 13% of them gets damaged. So including that you need to have um, um, daily rentals times um, 113%, right? So we're adding that over here. So this is um, one plus the value here, damage. We are just um, having extras in for the ones which are damaged. So we're going to use an equal round. So round, and then we're going to select um, max daily rentals, which is B3 times D3, uh, which in 
which in, which includes the damaged okay so uh, we, we have multiply by d3 and then uh, we are number of digits you want to round so you want to round to zero decimal places right so you put zero and then close brackets so that it won't give the helmets per location needed in frac in a fraction instead it will round it off to show um, uh, whole numbers okay so you need to have 600 and sorry 465 helmets and then you can fill it to the rest um, so you might want so here they say that copy the formula but not the cell formatting from cell e3 to e4 to e5 so you don't want to copy the cell formatting so what you can do is fill it and as you fill you're going to Uh, you're not going to fill the formatting so let's do it in another way I'm going to copy it and then select these two values right click and paste only the formula okay so that it does not paste the formatting now here by mistake we have uh, filled with the formatting so what you can do is you can simply select this cell which has the right format and then I can use um, format painter to copy the formatting here so that that has the same format all right so let's go and check the workbook if it has the same screenshot. So we Yeah, this is Marina, so Santa Monica, uh, Venice, Marina, and uh, new worksheet, or uh, new location worksheet, that is okay, and then, uh, yeah, so everything seems to be okay there, and uh, let's look at the last option. Elements per location. So that seems to be okay there. All right. So you can submit it now. Okay. So go ahead and submit it. And then you can resubmit it if. Uh, after reading the report thank you for watching